Hey guys, Scott and Nate from PlayerCourt.com. What does a waiter and your volley have in common? All right, guys, so today we're talking about volleys. This video is for players with a player court rating of 60 and up. If you don't know what that means, click the button in the link below and join the community. So, waiters in my volley. You know, I, didn't, I didn't name this video, as you might have guessed. What on what earth? You, you tell me, what do you think they have in common? I mean, if we're talking about my backhand volley and the service I had last night, uh, they both make me sad, I guess. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, what, what do you got? I don't know. Service was not good last night. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah the back in volley makes me sad. Yeah. So guys, what we're talking about is this little trick to make sure that you're getting depth. Part of the problem that we, that we have with volleys is that we, we perceive it like we need to go high to low, right? It's like we're trying to be aggressive or we're trying to go through. I say that, right? Because you teach slice and then all of a sudden coaches are talking about, no, it's just like your slice backhand. Everybody's starting to think they're supposed to hack down on things. Yeah, and, it, and it may, there's, there's some, right? Like if you're right on top of the net, can you move through the volley? Certainly, a little bit of an angle. I mean, it, it is backspin, so there's going to be a little bit of a high-low nature. But especially mid-court transitioning, we don't want to finish the volley the same way that we would right on top of net. And this is where the, the commonality... This is where our waiter comes in? It is, yeah. The commonality between the waiter and the volley, what, what they have in common is... When we're finishing volleys through transition, what we want to focus on as we hit is that we should be raising the volley up. Ah, uh, it's like a little waiter yeah, tray. Yeah, it's like a little I tray. Get it. Put some uh, drinks there, right. whatever. So this is the second part, part that I think is really important, is that we always want to make sure that the racket stays above the wrist, right? Like we want to make sure Sweet. that we're staying above the elbow and all here. So if this was a tray, right, and I let my, it get below my elbow, right? Then we get service like we got last night. Yeah, we dump it, your drinks all over it, my It would lap. be rather poor. Yeah. And this is what we see, I think, sometimes when people are reaching, right? They're like reaching for their volleys here, and this arm ends up straightening up. But we're going to show you this tip because the, the, you know, most of you are keeping your racket above, above the elbow uh, for effective volleys. I think most of us are familiar with that. This, this raising the racket up at the end for the finish is something that you may not have seen before. So let's show you that now in demo mode and see if we can get some depth on those volleys. All right, so in the first demo, what you're going to notice is the volleys are going to stay relatively low. And this, this is because as the racket drops and really stays high to low, I'm not getting much lift under the ball. And it's in fact the finish, right? The finish is not assisting. And it's not necessarily that the finish has an impact on what the contact is, it's that the mindset, the perimeters in which the stroke is operating are really difficult if I'm perceiving it high to low. So in this next demo, what you're gonna notice is the mindful trick at the end where I'm gonna actually raise the racket up and it's going to keep the plane of my racket under the ball longer, giving me better depth, a little bit more plow through the ball. As you might have noticed in the first demo, the ball was staying relatively short or even in the net. All right, guys, so pretty simple instruction, but definitely actionable. If you've got problems sticking that volley deep, you just feel like your volleys are landing a little bit short, you can't get them close to the baseline, this little extra push up to waiter's tray at the end is, is what we're looking for to generate that depth. Yeah, it's actually what we saw Pat Rafter do quite a bit, and the guy was a master at transitioning in and taking that deep volley. So, you know, maybe some of those, the, of the incorrect demo, some of those may have looked good, but the trajectory of the path, the path of the ball is just short. It's not doing any real damage. This is about getting depth and building that bridge that gets us forward. And then when we get a little bit tighter to the net, we can be a little bit more actionable with that high to low, be a little bit more aggressive at getting the ball through the court. One other thing I think players struggle with and why they don't do this is they've been told for so long not to swing at their volleys. And so you think that, you know, making contact and then pushing out is a swing. This is definitely not a swing. It's something we want you to do to generate that extra depth on your volleys. So that's don't a good note. This yeah, that's a good note. Yeah, it's, it's really about what's happening behind you, not in right. front of you. That's right. right. All right, guys, so get out there. Make sure that you're working on that joint position, trying to keep the racket above the elbow, even on those low volleys. Get down there. Remember, you volley with your legs. And then finishing from that volley and raising it up. Raise a glass. For sure. Okay. Guys, hope this instruction helps. As you know, it's for a very specific level of player and up. If you're a beginner, we're certainly not here yet. So do us a favor. We want to give you the coaching that you need based on what you've got going on. We want to introduce you to players in your area. 
that are at your same skill level so you can practice that specific stuff. And that's exactly what we do in the player court community. Click the button in the link below, check it out. Also, if you want to see us regularly on YouTube, click the subscribe button. And if you like Nate's face, press hey. like below. We'll see you guys soon. See you guys.